If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I created a lot of videos about head tracking and the use of head tracking in monitoring spatial audio with headphones. We talked a lot about different types of head trackers. I talked about the Vives NX head tracker, that was actually the first one. I talked about the uh, Archie Labs head tracker, that was an interesting one, it's a do-it-yourself head tracker. Uh, we talked about the Subaware head tracker, which for me is one of the more exciting ones because it completely integrates into your headphones. Uh, I also briefly mentioned the Vid Motion head tracker, although I didn't never really used it because it's not that particularly useful, it's not that accurate. And we also talked about the Meta Quest, or as it was called back then, the Oculus Quest for head tracking, and that was also an option that we could use. But what if you don't want to strap anything on your head, anything on your headphones, or, in, or you don't want to look as dark as I usually look when I create these videos? What if you just want to get started and uh, you want the things that you already have? Well, the good news is you can, and what we're going to do today is we're going to use a device that all of you already have, uh, a, a phone, in my case an iPhone, and we're going to use that for head tracking. And uh, you will see that it's actually really uh, very accurate and easy to set up and most importantly uh, close to free. Uh, it's not completely free, but uh, it's almost free. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So stick around to find out how to use an iPhone for head tracking. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westphal College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. An invite link is in the description below. And uh, since you're already at it, please don't forget to press the like button because YouTube wants us to do that. The original motivation for this video came from a discussion that we had on the Discord server. One of the users was using a web-based face tracking application. The way this really works is that uh, it takes in the webcam and then tries to figure out the position of your head based on the image that it gets. And this can actually be done through a web-based application and that worked actually reasonably well. The only issue with that is that it takes away a lot of resources from your computer. So if you are already working with audio that already requires a lot of resources, you don't necessarily want to put any additional resources onto the system itself. So you would like to actually offset that somewhat. So the question that I've asked myself was, is it possible to do that externally, to do it with something that uh, does not really take away any resources from the system that I'm working on? And the answer is fairly obvious. Uh, mod modern phones have a very sophisticated face tracking mechanism in there. Uh, so the idea is uh, to do all the calculations for the face tracking on the phone and then essentially communicate the position data from the phone into the system. And this is essentially what we're going to do today. The application we're going to use is called FacePose App. I'm going to post a link to the web page in the description below. It is available for iOS as well as Android. Uh, it's not completely free, but almost free, only costs a few bucks. So you can simply download it and install it in your, on your phone. And what it really does is it just takes in the tracking information that the phone calculates and communicates that to an external device. And that's really all, everything that we need. Now, before I continue, I need to point out that uh, this application was originally built for uh, supporting games. So what it really does, it communicates the information that you would use in a game that uses head tracking. And that information is slightly different to what we normally use in head tracking for spatial audio or audio in general. But the issue that we're going to run into is that the information that this application is producing is actually more than we need. So we need to do some filtering. And unfortunately, there isn't really an application that can do that. So we actually need to write a little bit of code, not all that much, uh, so don't be worried. And I'm going to post a link where I can download the script that we're going to write so that you don't have to do the programming yourself. But there's a little bit of nerdiness involved in the video today. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set the network settings in the application itself. So let's go into the FacePose app application. I'm using that on my iPhone here. At the bottom right corner, you have the settings button. So let's push that and that open up the, the settings. And here in the OSC settings, well, first of all, you need to enable OSC. And in the OSC settings, you need to put in the destination IP. And the destination IP needs to be the computer on which you are producing. So that's the one 
where we are going to use the actual face tracking application, where we're actually going to do the, uh, the special audio production. Uh, in my particular case, it is 192.168 point one point thirty four whatever your network is put it in there um, it's most likely going to be something completely different and we need to select the destination port in my case I selected seven thousand um, but that doesn't really make any difference just put one in and uh, and uh, make sure that you remember which port you used and that's really everything that we need to do here uh, once we have done that uh, what we can do is we can simply start the application by clicking on the start button and it will now uh, show my face and it will start tracking I see the tracking information the pose information at this in the screen below now uh, because I have glasses things and and more importantly because I have the microphone in front of me it might get confused at some point but uh, it's actually it's actually really really good uh, modern phones are extremely good in in tracking uh, head positions so that's that's something that essentially came a long way with the introduction of neural networks and uh, artificial intelligence in in uh, artificial intelligence engines in, in phones just be aware that if you are using this application on the phone this actually drains the battery quite a bit so you if, if you're using that for a longer period of time you might actually want to connect uh, to a power to an external power because uh, it's going to drain your phone really really quickly so let's for the moment turn it off we are going to turn it on a little bit later and let's uh, let's continue the setup on our main system now before i do anything i need to make sure that the messages that the facebook app is sending out are actually reaching my system uh, so in order to do that i'm going to use a little application called osc router once again i'm going to post the link in the description below osc router is essentially an application that lets, lets me take in osc messages uh, rewrite them or redirect them and send them out again and I'm, in this particular case I'm just going to use it in order to make sure that uh, I actually see what the computer actually receives these messages so let's just listen to the incoming port 7000 that was the port that we used uh, let's apply that and let's see uh, it's now opening up the uh, connection and what I now need to do is I need to start the face post, post up on my system so on my phone so let's start that up and as soon as I start that up let's press the button I see the packets coming in now the OSC router is also trying to send them out I have not specified anything so don't let you be confused about that and uh, we can essentially see that the messages from the face post up are now actually reaching us so let's stop that again and let's uh, inspect those messages the way they essentially look is that it sends out an OSC message with the message header FPA OSC six degrees of freedom and then we have essentially six values and that is the main difference to uh, what we usually have in face tracking or in head, head tracking for audio and audio we only use three degrees of freedom only the your pitch and roll information here we actually have six uh, your pitch and roll and then x y and c coordinate so uh, what we technically need to do in order to actually use that we would have to rewrite these OSC messages so first of all we need to change the message header to something that the plugin that we're going to use uh, is going to understand so that the plugin actually understands understands that is a message that it needs to process and then we need to take out the XYZ information from the parameters that are passed on and just take in the uh, your pitch and roll information now uh, if you inspect it a little bit closer you see that your pitch and roll are the first three and XYZ are the second three um, the problem now is that we need to find a way to really convert that into something that uh, that the uh, plugin can understand so we need to completely rewrite them when I originally started out this uh, video uh, researching this video my hope was that I could actually use the OSC router for that purpose uh, the reason uh, this was a hope that I had is because on the Mac there exists an application that actually allows you to do that uh, it's called Oscillator so if you are on the Mac you can actually use Oscillator for whatever we're doing now but uh, on Windows unfortunately Oscillator does not exist and OS router does not really have that capability so we need to find something else so what we essentially need is we need a little application that can take in an OSC message and and can rewrite that OSC messages it, it can sort of change the uh, message header and it can also take out certain parameters and we will actually need to recalculate some of the other parameters now um, for those of you who are in audio whenever we have something 
that essentially no other application can do? What is the one application that always comes to the rescue? Now, the answer to that question, obviously, is Reaper. So we are going to use Reaper, and we are not really going to use the Reaper directly. What we're going to use is we're going to use a little application that comes from the developers of Reaper. And this, this little application is called OSCIBot. I hope I pronounced it correctly. The OSCIBot application has actually been around for quite some time. It is an application that is primarily used for converting OSC into MIDI or for rewriting MIDI information or for rewriting OSC information before it enters or leaves the door. And uh, it is very, very flexible. So uh, we can do almost anything we want with it. The disadvantage obviously being that it also requires us to, it has a little bit of a learning curve and it's not really particularly well documented. So what we will need to do is we will need to write a little script in order to tell the OSCE bot what exactly we want from it. And uh, we will see that's not that particularly difficult. So if you've never done any scripting, don't worry. It's not going to be that particularly complicated. And for those of you who don't want to punch in the, uh, the text uh, themselves, uh, you can actually download the script that I'm going to write from my Discord community. In my Discord server, you will actually find a forum where I post all the information or all the files that I use in some of the videos that I produce. Now, Ossibot is a free application, so you can simply download and install that. I've already done that. As soon as you start it up, what it's going to do is it's going to load its instructions from a script. Uh, and the script has to be at a very particular location on your system. And it will actually tell you where exactly it searches it from. In my particular case, it is uh, users Michael uh, Aptada Roaming Ostibot. And if I go to that location, uh, I've already uh, stored here the uh, script. Uh, it's called facepost.txt. And uh, that is the one script that OSCIBOT is, uh, is loading in. So let's open up that script. And before I do, I need to once again point out, if you don't want to punch it in yourself, you can go to my Discord community and download it and uh, simply upload it to your, or put it into the whatever folder OSCIBOT asks you to put it into. But you will see it's actually a very, very simple script. So let's, let's go into the, that script and let's open it up. And uh, the first thing I need to point out is that uh, this is a script that only works with the IEM scene rot rotator. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the scene rotator for uh, head tracking of ambisonics information. If you want me to show you how the, how the script would look like or how to write a script for other applications or for other head trackers, let me know. I can certainly do that. But it follows the same principles, really. So, so just be aware this is particularly or designed for the IEM scene rotator but uh, you can simply kind of write your equivalent scripts for any other plugin that you're going to use. There might be something which is a little bit more complicated if you want to, for example, use uh, quaternions instead of your pitch and roll. There's a little bit of mathematics involved. Uh, but once again, you know, kind of if you want me to show you how to do that, I can certainly create a video about that. But so let's have a look at the at the actual script. So so um, I'm just going to kind of tell you in brief strokes essentially what the script does. Essentially, the first thing that you need to do is you need to specify what the input is and the input in our case and we call it OSC in that is just a name that you give to that particular input it is an OSC input and it is listening to the port 7000 that's essentially the input uh, we also need to specify the output the output is uh, also an OSC output and uh, we are going to send it to a different port just to make sure that nothing is confused or anything so uh, you can choose whatever you want to just be but sure that you remember which port that you're using and this is uh, in our case, port 7001. Uh, and then essentially we need to tell that uh, what we want to do is we want to write a little bit of code that is that is executed as soon as an OSC message is received. And this is done by uh, by essentially giving that statement OSC message at OSC message that essentially everything that comes after that is, uh, is uh, passed through as soon as an OSC message arrives. So whenever uh, something is received, essentially it kind of goes through that through that little procedure and kind of uh, processes that. And uh, all, we really, all we really do is we are listening for a message that uh, has the message header FPA OSC six degrees of freedom. So this is what we essentially saw that the face track application is sending out. And uh, what we need to do is we need to just convert that into your pitch and roll information for the IEM scene rotator. And this way this is done is by sending three different OSC messages to our output. 
Uh, and the first OSC message, uh, the, the minus one, by the way, only says that it is sent to uh, the active output, which is uh, the, uh, the uh, OSC out here. Uh, we have the scene rotator yaw, that's the yaw information. Uh, that is stored in the, sec in the third parameter, actually, because we start counting with zero in the third parameter of the original OSC message. And uh, in the original OSC matches, you might have noticed that it came in not in form of uh, actual an angle. What it came in is in form of radiance. So we need to convert it into a traditional angle. And uh, the way this is done by multiplying it by 360 and then dividing by 2 pi, uh, what I simply did is I multiplied it with 57.9. Two nine five six seven eight. That's approximately three eight three sixty by divided by two pi, and that turns the, uh, uh, the angle in radians into an angle in degrees, and uh, that is what the IAM scene rotator needs to needs to get. So we do that for the yaw. We do that for the pitch. The pitch was the first parameter that was passed on from the Facebook app, and the roll was the second parameter. And uh, we're sending them out to seven thousand and one. And that's really everything that we need to do on the script. So let's uh, head over to let's let's do Reaper and let's see if that actually arrives at uh, the IEM seed rotator. Now, in this video, I'm just going to do a proof of concept, so I'm not really going to do anything with it. All I'm going to do is I'm going to load up Reaper, I'm going to create the track, and then put the IAM scene rotator on there, and I'm going to see if the IAM scene rotator is actually receiving the your pitch and roll information from the Facebook app. So let's load up uh, Reaper. So here we have an empty session of Reaper, and uh, let's put in a track. Uh, let's make that a 64 channel track. Doesn't really make any difference, but what the heck. We can, we can do 64 channels, let's do 64 channels. And then let's add a, a an IAM scene rotator. And oops, sorry, the instruments. I want to do all plugins. Okay, here we are. And uh, let's 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 take the scene rotator here and let's add that. And uh, now we need to figure out if the scene rotator is actually receiving OSC messages. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up the OSC. Uh, input settings. And once again, I apologize. Uh, this is awfully small, but that is because of the scaling that I'm doing on my system when I'm creating these videos. So, um, so essentially what we're going to do is, and all we really need to do is we need to listen to the port that we have specified. So the uh, OSCE port application is taking in from port 7000 and it, it's sending out uh, at port 7001. So let's put in 7001 and let's open up that port. Uh, we now see that that port is opened up. Now, the last thing I need to do is I need to uh, start the face pose up and let's do that. And as soon as I do that, oops, uh, essentially I see that uh, the application is tracking my face. So the one thing I need to point out is that because of the lights in here and my glasses, uh, the application is sometimes a little bit confused where exactly my eyes are, uh, but otherwise it's actually working quite well. In your particular environment, if you're using that, you're probably not going to have any issues, but it's, it's just kind of while, while I'm recording that. So, uh, so let's have a look essentially on how that uh, translates into what the scene rotator receives. Now we see if I if I turn my head to the to the left, essentially the uh, your information that's the blue one here is turning to the right, and this is exactly the the uh, uh, behavior that we wanted to have. Uh, because uh, if you remember in the last video, we said that we used the scene rotator as a replacement for head tracking. So instead of tracking or instead of uh, changing the position of the head, we're actually changing the position of the of the environment. So if I'm moving the head to the left, I'm this has the same effect as if I would change or I would ro rotate the entire environment to the right. And that's essentially what's happening here. So, so if I'm moving the head to the to the to the left, the the scene is rotated to the right. If I'm moving it to the left. To the right, the scene is rotated to the left. If I'm moving it up, it's down. If I'm moving it down, it's up. It's a little bit more finicky on the up down side. Uh, once again, uh, that is just because of the lighting that I have here, and uh, also the the roll. That's the that's the orange one here or a brown, whatever that is, um, and that actually works quite. Well, now there are a couple of things that I need to point out. Uh, it does work really, 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 really well. So if you want to get into that and if you want to figure out if 
that is something you want to do before you buy a hardware head tracker. That's actually a very inexpensive way of doing it. And, uh, in, and, and one that actually works well and one that does not require any resources on your main system. So if you're doing any music production, you really don't want to use any of your resources for anything else than, than music production. This is not doing that. So that's all the computation is done on the phone. And all we're really doing on our system is converting the OSC messages and something that the IAM scene irritator can understand. Now, however, um, there are a couple of caveats. Well, first of all, obviously I cannot move around completely because as soon as the iPhone or as soon as the face tracking application as soon as the, the camera in the phone loses track of my eyes, it can no longer track me. So the, 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 the angle that I can move around is somewhat limited to uh, the fact that the, that the phone needs to see where my position is. The other thing is in order for that to really work accurately, it would actually have to be in the, directly in front of me. And that's obviously not the case. So I can uh, essentially position it slightly above me. Uh, on top of my of my computer that would actually work or i can put it below but the um the the the, the pitch information essentially is not particularly accurate and and i could compensate for that by by adding a little bit of a kind of an offset in the in the script i don't really have a um in this particular setup don't really have a a, a button that allows me to center the position, what I essentially get is exactly what the phone is seeing, but I can compensate that for that. Once again, I can compensate for that in the, in the script that I wrote. So for example, by adding or removing a little bit of an angle, depending on whether this, uh, this iPhone is above or below me. And the final thing is, and I've already mentioned that as well, this, uh, takes a lot of toll on my iPhone. Uh, it, it kind of, it, uh, it drained the battery. I think yesterday when I prepared that video, it drained the battery within two to three hours. <laughs> so if you're, if you're using that application, be aware that it requires a lot of battery. So you might want to connect your phone to a charger all the time while you're using that. Now, this is really everything I wanted to say. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I joined my Discord community. Don't forget to press the like button if you like that video. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about how to do what I just did for other plugin suites, not only the IEM plugin suite, but maybe also for Sparta or maybe for the Envelope for Life system, let me know and I can create additional videos. For most of these applications, the, it, it should be fairly easy for you to just kind of take what I've done here and translate that into that particular application uh, by changing the, um, the OSC message that you're sending out and also changing kind of the the order of the of the uh, information, the way they send out. But if you're using Quaternion, once again, that might be a little bit more complicated. So it might actually make sense in the future if there's interest for me to create a little video on how to, to use Quaternions in that context. But uh, that's really everything I wanted to say today. Uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, see you at the next video.